Today we're going to fit data to a line and we're going to predict, use it to predict stuff. All right, it's kind of cool. Uh, first thing we need to talk about is a scatter plot. A scatter plot is a graph used to determine whether there is a relationship between paired data. They show trends in data. If you look over here, we have a scatter plot. All right, we have hours of studying and compared to the test scores. Now, notice it's not perfect, it's not a straight line. But this is like a positive slope. If I drew a line through here, it would have a positive slope. Positive slope is the same thing as a positive correlation. It goes up and to the right. All right. So in general, the more hours you study, the higher your test score. Are there times where some people could say, well, I studied a lot and didn't do very well? Yeah, that can happen. Okay. But in general, the trend of the data is this way. Negative correlations, like a negative slope, if we drew a line through it, it would be going down and to the right. All right. Now, what we're going to be doing uh, shortly is we're going to get some real data, and we're going to put it in a calculator, and we're going to figure out that line that I just drew. All right. The calculator is going to help us come up with the y equals mx plus b for that line, so then we can use it to predict. So we can say, oh, in 10 hours, we'll be about... 50. All right. Now it's a long process for that calculator. Okay. It's not hard. Once you know how to do it, it's very easy. All right. But a lot of you may freak out ah, and just want to have the teacher show you. Well, you know, there's, I walk you through it step by step in this video. And there are step by step instructions in the packet. So please, please, please try first. Don't freak out. You can do it. All right. The last one's no correlation. Now, just imagine, all right, let's say you have some pets. If you have one pet, maybe you have bad grades. Maybe you have great grades. Maybe just okay pet grades, right? Maybe you have a lot of pets, it's the same thing. I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason to how this data would fit. There's no trend upwards, no trend downwards, so that would be a no correlation, all right? Right, let's get some through, through some more vocabulary first, and then we'll show you on the calculator. A lot of vocabulary. I apologize for that. Best fitting line. The best fitting line is a line that most closely follows a trend in data. About half the data is above, and about half of the data is below. Again, you may want to pause the video right now and just write all this stuff down, because I'm going to go kind of quick. All right, so let's take a look at our last page. Half the data above and half the data below. So it's kind of tricky, but if you look there, that's a pretty good line of best fit because about half the data points are above, half are below, and it does go through some points, right? Whereas if I drew this line here, this would not be a good uh, best fitting line because there are not equal amounts of points below and above. Do you think I can have a best fitting line for no correlation? That's right, absolutely not. There's no, co no correlation, there's no line. All right, linear regression. That's what we're gonna do on the calculator, and it's the process to find the best fitting line. We're gonna do that on the calculator, but we'll get this y equals mx plus b, all right? In fact, I believe on the calculator, it's ax plus b. Why does the calculator do it like that? Because they wanna be difficult. No, I'm just kidding. All right, but we just have to understand that A is going to be our slope and B is going to be our intercept, just like before. Interpolation. We're going to find that equation, and then we're going to use it to approximate a value between two known values. So if we were going back onto this graph, I may not know what happens if I study for five and a half hours because there's no point here. But I can interp interpolate that from the equation. Extra, extrapolation, excuse me, is when we use the equation to approximate a value outside the known value. All right, so if we go back again, uh, we only go from zero to looks like uh, 10, but what if I want to know for 20 hours of studying? I don't have that, do I? So since I don't have that, that means I have to extrapolate that. All right, so that's some vocabulary. Now let's get into the fun part. Okay, here's the deal. On here, I have all the directions you need to be able to do this correctly on the calculator. And if you follow them like we do in a second, you'll be okay. 
All right, so hit stat. My stat button is right here. It says stat on it. I'm going to hit stat. All right, then it says choose one edit. And I can do that by either hitting, making it on there. I can scroll up and down. All right, or I can hit the number one down here. I like to do that, number one. So this comes up with a blank screen. All right, this is our list screen, okay? All right, now it says type the data values for the independent variable in column L1. So up here we have negative two, negative one. So we're gonna type these in. So I'm gonna press negative two, and then I press enter, and it goes automatically down. Negative one, and I'm gonna press enter. Zero, press enter. One, press enter. Two, press enter. Three, press enter. All right, you may wanna pause as I go through these steps to make sure you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Then I'm gonna press the right arrow and it goes over to L2. And L2 is gonna be my dependent, my Y value, so that's four. Now I wanna put these in the exact same order they are. That way the points match up. All right, see two negative one matches up with two negative one here. All right, so we have this. Now we can take a look at this on a scatter plot. So we're gonna hit the second button and then the Y equals. So seconds here, and then Y equals is right here. All right, and this is our stat plots button. All right, then it says choose number one. So choose number one, I'm hit one. Now it says turn on the plot by pressing enter. So it says on and off. Right now it's highlighting an on, but this is dark solid. That means that's our option. So we wanna choose that. So I'm gonna press enter. All right, then it says next to type, you should have selected the scatter plot. So let's take a look. Do we have our scatter plot? We sure do. So let's go down. We got our scatter plot. So now our X list. Well, our X list was in L1, so we're fine. Our Y list was in L2, so we're fine. Now we could mark these however we want, all right? But this is exactly what we want all the way through here. All right, now we're gonna graph it. And if you see this, it just says hit zoom and choose nine. You normally press graph first, right? But this is gonna save us a step. So I'm gonna press zoom. All right. Zoom again, come on. Yours probably works a little bit better because mine's on the computer and it's a little slow. Now notice I wanna choose zoom stat. Zoom stat is not on here, it's number nine. I can just hit number nine, I can go down to number nine. Right there, zoom stat, or I can just hit the nine, all right? So now it zooms to just the points we want. So if we look at this, we know this is a negative correlation, don't we, because it's going down and to the right, okay? So we've got, uh, we've entered our data, we've made a scatter plot. Now we're gonna get the linear, linear uh, regression on here. So, if you says hit stat, then go right arrow to calc. So I'm gonna hit stat. Now I wanna go over to the calc menu up here, so I'm gonna go to the right. All right, and then it says choose number four, linear regression AX plus B. Linear regression AX plus B, so we're gonna go down. Hit number four. All right, then we're gonna go over and we're gonna hit our very VARs button and that's right next to, uh, that's pretty close to the stat button and VARs is right here. And hit VARs and then it says go to Y VARs. So Y VARs is the next one over. All right, and it says choose function number one. Then it says choose number one, Y1. So this is our very first function. We're gonna put this into Y1 on our calculator, all right? All right, now I'm gonna hit enter. And it gives me some really good stuff. It gives me A and B. My slope is negative 1.2 and my intercept is uh, 0.933. Now, I always round to the nearest 10th. When I give you answers and when I use the answers, I'm always gonna round to the nearest 10th so let's write the equation here. I know that my it's y equals a negative 1.2x plus my b. My b, 9 is my 10th, 
So three tells me to keep it, so 0.9 stays. So that is the equation for our line of best fit. Now, here's a great thing. If I press y equals, or if I press graph, excuse me, now I can see my line of best fit right there. And notice, about half are above and below, right? Um, this one's a little bit more tricky because this point is so far down and these are close to the line that if you average them out, they'd be right, okay? All right, so now we found, uh, we need to find this one. So we're going to do the exact same thing. All right, we're going to go to stat. We're going to go to edit. All right, now to clear out these, you can delete them one at a time, or if you go up and highlight the list, L2, and press clear, now it looks like it's nothing happened, but then when I press down, the list is gone. All right, so I'm going to go up to L1, press clear, come down, and the list is gone. So now I'm going to put in my new list. My new X's are negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 4. And then I'm going to go over and do my L2, and that's going to be 3, 3, 1, 0, negative 3. All right. So let's, um, let's go to Zoom Stat. Let's see what we got here. Remember, Stat was number 9. All right. Now, check this out. We have a line here. All right. That line is from our last problem, so we probably want to get rid of that. So I'm going to press Clear on that. Okay, so here's our, our points. All right, let's find our linear line of linear regression. So here we go. I'm going to hit uh, stat, calc, and I want number four, linear regression. All right, and remember, I want to go to vars. I want to go to y vars, function, and y1. All right, press enter. So now we're going to have to do some fancy uh, math here. So let's take a look here. And we have my line of best fit, y equals, my a is negative 1 point. Now this is a 2, but the 7 should make that a 3. Negative 1.3x plus 2 point, the 3, uh, the 2 keeps that a 3. So there we have our line of linear regression. Now we're going to approximate some values, all right? So we're going to approximate some values by solving this when x is 3. So here we go. I'm going to plug in x is 3. So negative 1.3 times 3 plus 2.3 equals, and now here's a great thing. I'm just going to put this right here in my calculator. All right, I always press second quit to get to my home screen. So negative 1.3. Point three. I like using parentheses for multiplication plus 2.3 and so that's going to give us negative 1.6. So if x were 3 we would have a value of about negative 1.6. Alright now let's find it for x is 10. Alright so what's the only thing here that changes? x is not 3 anymore it's 10 negative 1.3 times 10 plus 2.3. Here's a great trick. If you go up, you go up, go up here. Sorry, I knew that was going to happen. All right, if you go up and highlight your last answer, press enter, because we want the exact same thing. Now, the only thing that's different is instead of 3, I want 10. So I'm going to put a 10 here. Now you need to insert a little bit of room. All right. Now, if you don't like that way, you can put it in the old way, too. That's fine. And so our answer would be negative 10.7. All right. All right. Approximate the value of x1, y equals negative 18. So now we're going to, have to solve an equation. So negative 18 equals negative 1.3x plus 2.3. So subtract 2.3. 
that gives us negative 20.3 equals negative 1.3x. Divide by negative 1.3. That one I don't know off the top of my head, so let's see. Uh, negative negative 20.3 divided by negative 1.3 and that's about 15.6. There you go. We don't want that. All right, so now the next thing, what we just were touching on there is a zero of a function. The zero of a function is when the x value uh, equals zero. In other words, when y equals zero. The x value when y equals zero, excuse me. So we're gonna plug in zero for y and solve it. It's the place where the graph crosses the y-axis. All right, so let's find the zero of this one. So I plug in zero for y and solve it. So I add 15. So 15 equals two x, divide by two and x is seven and a half. All right, zero of a function, that's pretty easy. So I want you to try this. Use the following line of best fit, approximate when x is four and find the zero. I'll pause it and come back in a sec. All right, here we go. So approximate when x equals four. So y equals negative point zero zero two. Uh, one too many zeros there, folks. Y equals negative zero point zero two times four plus one point four three five. All right, so here we go. So y equals. I'm going to put this right in here. Negative point zero two times four plus one point four three five. Now I've been rounded to tenths, but I started with more than tenths. I started with hun uh, hun uh, tenths, hundreds, thousands. So I'm gonna leave it as thousands here, all right? All right, so that's called significant digits. So that's one point three five five. Then it says find the zero, so I plug in the zero for y, negative 0.02x plus 1.435, subtract 1.435 from both sides. All right. And then I have negative 1.435 equals negative 0.02x, divide both sides by 0 0.02, negative 0.02, and let's see what we get. That one I don't know off the top of my head. Negative. One point four three five divided by negative point zero two gives me seventy one point seven five. All right, so I know that's a lot to handle. Uh, the calculator stuff is probably the trickiest stuff. Everything else is pretty easy. Just take some practice on it, all right? Uh, best of luck on the mastery check.